we have another red page. Let's continue the story. Have returned. Getting a little juicier here. <laughs> um, getting clear. So, uh, again, he reiterated that he is serious. Uh, we need apparently two more red pages before he is free. Um, and then he also reiterated that his his wicked brother Aknar is not to be trusted. He has a thirst for destruction or whatever. Uh, don't release him. Basically. So, we'll see. But, well, it's gotta be fair and listen to both sides, so... <laughs> Thankfully, this will be very quick. Yay, click it fast. <laughs> that one doesn't remember that you did it. Yeah, I suppose it's pretty easy enough. Yeah. Like, that was way faster than Selenity. 
think so. <laughs> desperate <laughs> um he called what he called his brother um he, he said he had a pretty speech and he tricked their father hideously murdered their father so God. at least according to Aknar, atris is dead dun 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 whether that's true or not we're not sure because cirrus has not confirmed on his side uh but we'll see um Ak. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm dumb. <laughs> no. Ugh. Forgot I had... I had forgotten to put the darning needle away while I was dicking around and I just dropped it. <laughs> oh no. It was on top of my phone and now it's on the floor somewhere. Oh dear. <laughs> eh, it's not a sharp one because it's a yarn needle, but whatever. <laughs> e, still, <laughs> find it. still not great. <laughs> But yeah, he said, uh, he said he'll trick you too, so... Oh, oh yeah, he also said his greed is endless, and... Well, we can certainly see that he's he's got a taste for the lavish and all that stuff, but, uh... I don't know, so... One brother... Each brother is ex ex accusing the other. We're not really quite sure of the whole story yet. We don't know what happened to Atrus. He's either murdered or at the very least missing, so... Whoops. We'll see. Anyway, uh... <laughs> now that we've been talking about murder... <laughs> no. Um, Who wants to talk about murder? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's move on to our next book. Uh, I believe it should be this one. Yes, this one. Before arriving in this age, I was determined that it would be a journey to a world very different from my previous adventures, and it was. The sky here is dark and grey and incessantly displays flashes of lightning in the distance. I met a very old man with a long beard and hair that hangs to his waist. He is very feeble and has trouble even moving. This man has obviously been through very many things in this strange world, and I have learned many things from him. He has told me an interesting story of this world's history. Years ago, he told me, there was a beautiful city that rose up out of the water. It housed many people inside its walls, and the people had everything they wished for. The city was surrounded by three high hills which rose higher than the city. On the east hill of the city rested a large lookout post. The people of the city had constructed the post expecting visitors to arrive from the east. 
The people had no means of traveling on the water, which forced them to merely wait for friend or foe. As time passed, friendly visitors brought rumors of an enemy that existed beyond the horizon. The people grew fearful, yet nothing happened. One day, the usually sunny sky became as dark as night, and black ships appeared on the horizon. The lookout post attempts at peace were turned away, and the sentries there were easily overwhelmed. The ships continued to wreak havoc on the city, apparently destroying everyone and everything. After the foundations of the city were destroyed, the city sunk deep into the ocean, and only the lookout post remained. The black ships sailed away. The man continued to say that eight people had hidden and managed to survive through the attack. In the nine years since the attack, two of the survivors had died. He also said that it was rumored that ten years from the attack, the enemy would return, return to finish the destruction they had started so long ago. I have decided since hearing the man's story, it would be admirable to save the civilization and stop this enemy's plan of destruction. I am excited about the adventure that awaits me, and an idea has sparked in my mind to provide the needed defense for these people. I met the remaining survivors today, and I have begun work on a plan for protection. After a short absence, I have returned to this age with my two sons. They have, as of yet, traveled rarely with me, and they are understandably excited to be here. They have grown considerably since, uh, grown considerably since Everdunes. Uh, which is a reference to something that will not come up again in this game. But <laughs> and it is already obvious to me that they will be great help this, a great help this time, instead of the nuisance they have been in the past. All three of us, along with four of the healthier survivors, began construction today. We are building upon the old city's ruins, which will provide a perfect foundation for our fortress. My sons have been spending much of their spare time on the South Island, where most of my materials are stored. I am very pleased with their intelligence and their creativity is refreshing to see, as they work on some small projects of their own. Small projects of their own, you say? <laughs> it has been f over four months now, and construction is going well. My sons love the world except for its grey sky. They detest the grey sky and tell me many times they wish the sky here were like the blue sky in mist. The old man I first talked to tells me that the enemy is due in four months. How do they know? I have questions. <laughs> so many questions. Um, I feel we will be ready when the time comes. The man reminds me of Emmett in many ways, and I often wonder how Emmett and his people are doing. You can see I'm doing these in a order. <laughs> but, um... Mm -hmm. It has been six months of work, and we have finally finished the fortress. It rests between the three hills, which are now only islands due to a rising water level that the people experienced after the attack. Uh, inside the fortress, I have designed a most intriguing device. It makes use of a technology called holography. <laughs> Wiggle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I began experimenting with on my visits to Aspermere. Uh, Aspermere? I think it's Atlas. It will be working in a couple of days after I compensate for some small miscalculations. This holographic device will enable the survivors to learn to use the fortress. The enemy is due to come soon, and I trust the fortress will provide. And here's uh, a schematic of the fortress. Sufficient protection for all of us. The black ships have come. Their attack was substantial. Their weapons have been st stopped, and it appears they have turned away in defeat. I cannot help but smile as I watch the boats leave. So does this black ship insignia look a little familiar? <laughs> Uh, last night, we had a small celebration, and the old survivors danced their dances of old. My sons did not understand why the sky had not turned back to its original blue. The old man told them that the storms would never end until the enemy was destroyed. I assured my sons that a blue sky was not worth the risk of death, and they seemed to hear me. I have had a healthy adventure, and have begun work on a new book. Once again, I must leave a familiar age in search of a new universe I have begun. But first, I will have extend an extended time with Catherine, whom I miss very much. I must also return to the people of the Tide. I believe in my travels I have found a substance that will ease the pain of their bone ailments that they have long endured. I hope to return to mechanical age one day, and find the population growing and my fortress still strong. Though the sky may always be black, 
I am confident the, the people here feel a heavier darkness has been lifted from their shoulders. We actually don't have any hints from this book, except for, you know, some story stuff. <laughs> um, and then, like, the schematic itself. We do have also this, which kind of shows, like, a staircase that can, what looks like it raises up, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. So there's that. So our next destination is the Mechanical Age. Gears. point a little bit more esoteric than the previous hints that we've gotten so far. But thinking about the places that we have not touched yet on the island, there is the clock tower. <laughs> Thinky face. Fun tidbit I keep forgetting to mention. Um, uh, but the two, the, there were two brothers who were the main kind of heads of this project. They're uh, Rand and Robin Miller. Um, so Cirrus over there is played by Robin Miller, and Cirrus and uh, sorry, Aknar and Atrus are both played by Rand Miller. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think after, I think after, I'm actually not sure which Mist game it was after, but, uh, Robin Miller eventually split off from Cyan to do his own stuff, and Rand was the only person left on the team, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Um... And he continued to play Atrus throughout the games, even though apparently he maybe was not too happy about it. <laughs> like, clearly at the beginning here, they did it because budgetary reasons. They probably didn't have the money to hire an actor. <laughs> so. But then he was kind of, he, yeah, so. It just happened. Hmm. Anyway, so 240. platforms. And our last mark switch marker. The gear platforms are really good. Door creak dot wave. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we've got a big gear here which 
I believe is a representation of the gear on the other side of the island. Um, and we have three numbers here. We have a little lever in the back here. Um, but yeah, so we had two, two, one. So basically, I suck at this puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so this lever turns these two. This lever turns the top two. And we can only do it so many times until this weight falls to the floor, and then we have to reset. Tear. So basically, we have to do this within a certain amount of turns. So what I think I want to do... God, I'm really bad at this puzzle. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, no, I, I'm always bad at those kinds of things. I think... What I do is... Start with the top. Oh! Oh, that's right! I forgot about that mechanic. So if I hold down, it just turns the middle one. Ah. Yeah, and that goes for both. Okay, so that that makes this easier, I think. So what I, I think Whoops. I, I think what I wanna do is one. So I want to put this on. I want to make this one. No. What? I want to make the bottom one one. And I think I can go with this two and go down. There we go. There we go. Nice. I think it's because I always forget that that's a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean. Alright, but as you can see, the gear has opened up halfway now, so... Neat. Also, sleep well, Black Daisy. Oh yeah, sleep well. Thank you for watching. As, as Atris loves to do, he has tiny models of the bigger things that change, <laughs> so... <laughs> like a dramatic idiot, but... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta live for that drama. So, now this gear is open. As you can see, uh, there is a book inside. Here we are at the mechanical village. And more ocean. <laughs> Such ocean. So we have this little thing here. It doesn't seem to be much we can do, but clearly it's something. 
we also have this little thing over here, which seems to be a, some sort of four combination. So a bunch of different symbols. Squiggle. And then we have this structure, which is clearly the lookout fortress, basically, I guess. Um, or the little fortress that Aegis built. Which also, I assume that the lookout that was all that was left is this island over here? Mm. There's also this other island, I'm not too sure. There's like two tiny islands, I guess. <laughs> I love this texture. I just, I love this texture. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Can we look up at any point? Not really. I guess not. Well, let's head inside. So this, this, uh, this place is constructed interestingly because of the way it's kind of like a gear thing. So we walk in and immediately, immediately it's like a weird QB hallway thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, to our left, there this there's these little models of uh, the spaceship and the oh. ship, except it's all gold. <laughs> of course. Not broken, of course, but there's also a uh, little spyglass, but can't see anything right now. This doesn't seem to point to anything. All right, did these do anything? Do they just glow? They don't seem to do anything except glow. <laughs> to open this drawer either, so... Sounds like a puzzle. Some kind of, uh, landscape. Shockingly enough, this isn't a puzzle. It's just, like, a thing. A yeah, I know, you would think this is a puzzle, but it's not. It's well, just... it's puzzly as hell. It's it's just kind of glowy. <laughs> wow. He's, he's got a bunch of little toys like that, I guess. Fancy. You can see it's like a little wooden bird, but if you... If we, uh, spin this up a bit... It, it animates! Yes. We've got this very large tapestry. <laughs> and this fucking... This fucking throne! <laughs> God, pretentious! It's kind of a pretentious douche. Uh, he's got a chessboard, chess very fancy chessboard. He's got a wine glass. You can sit in the throne. What is a man? What is a man? <laughs> a miserable little pile of books. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we can actually just sit in this throne for funsies. God. Um, if we take a look at this tapestry, that is in fact his face on this. God. So, uh, there's a reason why I went here third, because this tells a lot more about him than, say, his other room in Stoneship. Like, while Stoneship is fancy, it doesn't 
say quite as much as this room does, you know what I mean? <laughs> Doesn't have a pretentious ass portrait of himself as a fucking king. Yeah, as emperor. Strong. Like, I forget which emperor that's supposed to be, but yeah. Yeah. Also, it might be difficult to tell, but there's a little... There's, there's something going on here, you can see. Mm. There's actually, in fact... A hidden door. God. And this tells you maybe even more. Basically, you can take a look. There's all these chests. Uh, piracy. Clearly full of gold. I've got lots of wine bottles. Oh, I forgot about this note. Cirrus, your greed sickens me. Your desire for wealth and plunder is never satisfied. I will instruct my subjects not to pay your new tax. And you know they'll listen to me. Regards, Agnar. Uh, so this says a lot, too. They have subjects, question mark? And also, I guess, some new tax. Why does he believe he can levy a tax? There's, there's lots of questions here. <laughs> there's so many questions. Um, but yeah. Lots of wine bottles, there's chests. Uh... Crown.jpg? I'm not sure. <laughs> Crown.jpg. Some more gold and a red page. But yeah, so... You can probably tell by now that the rooms in me the Mechanical Age say a lot more about them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's move on to Akhnar's room. <laughs> Oh god, Jesus. <laughs> My concerns are infinite. Um, there's a reason why I... Uh, I never liked this room as a kid. I never liked Agnar's rooms as a kid. You can see he has a throne too, although it's decidedly more medieval, maybe. We can also sit on it for funsies. Why would you want to? Uh, we can see, let's see, we see an axe, a mace, some chains. Some kind of stretched out flayed skin in a fucking iron thing. Uh, we're not going in that. We're not going in the hidden room just yet. Uh, we've got some animal skin or something. We've got some kind of armor, some kind of broadsword. These are just for looking. Uh, we've got more interesting masks and more weapons. Uh, we've got... It looks like we can't even walk over here? I guess he's cur he's, he's curtained up the window here because... Edge. <laughs> edge. Light is forbidden. Get me some blackout curtains. We've got more maces, more weapons, more chains. We've got some kind of horrifying looking music box. <laughs> snack. 3D ass snack. <laughs> Polygonal snack. Polygonal. I'm good at words. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> some other stuff snack. like that. <sighs> oh, but this is actually kind of important. Shit. So what this does is this is the fortress rotation simulator that uh, Atrus mentioned in his book. This allowed the people who I assume you still live here, um, uh, to kind of learn how to rotate the tower. So, we can learn how to do the thing. And, as we can tell, Atrus loves his sound, uh, sound cues, so cowbell means south. <laughs> <laughs> so we can, I 
think what we do is pull this and then we can do this. Right. So that's east. So first we have to hold we have to pull this up and then we rotate it for maybe two seconds and then it'll get to the next destination. Yeah, so that will help us, obviously, later when we actually want to rotate the tower. Alright, I don't like this room, but let's go in. So as you can see, we have a whole ass cage over here. If we flip the switch, it is electric. <laughs> Why? So, that's a thing. Yikes. Uh, we've got some more. So much poison. So much poison, 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 poison. I don't think there's anything I can particularly click in here. Obviously the blue page is here, but we're not touching it. Um, this little chopping block with a meat cleaver in it. <laughs> Oof. And then this chest. There's a body in there. <laughs> cool. That's that's neat. <laughs> So you can imagine as a kid. <laughs> oh my god, I would have stopped playing right here now and noped out. See, I was lucky. As a kid, I had this I had a walkthrough that my grandmother had. Because clearly as a kid I couldn't figure out some of this stuff. There's there's yeah. just some stuff I was too young to kind of figure out. Um so when I were like six. <laughs> so I was uh I'd use the book whenever I was stuck, and I read in the book that there was a head in the chest, and I'm like, I'm never opening that chest. <laughs> cool. And I remember, uh, like, in my, of course, my imagination, like, conflated it to something, like, oh, always. so way horrible worse. I mean, this is bad, but, like, at this point in my life, I'm like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's still horrible, and you can tell just what kind of person Aknar is, but... <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, let's head back the way we came, which was this... Well, this way. Uh, this way. So, um, we have a little elevator here in the middle of the tower. And can I go around it? I guess not. Um, can do is there's this little button here clearly. And we can go down here. I love the music in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what this does is this lets us basically rotate the elevator to the correct position. Nice. Oops. Of course, this is a mechanical age, so everything is all machines, but... So now we can go... Right, there's something to this elevator, and I don't remember anymore. Um... I can't go downstairs. Where did this go? Right, I'm just stuck in the middle of the room? Oh, I think I might remember what it is. Yeah, because you come out here and it seems like nothing's going on, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I, it's a dead end. What am I supposed to do? 
Um, if you hit this middle button, it starts counting down. If we get out before it finishes counting down... Then we get the controls to the tower rotation. Nice. Ah, uh, right, that button just... okay. So right now... Right now, I believe the tower is pointed south. So we want it to point... We want it to point east. Let's give it one, two... Okay, yeah, that's the sound for east. on this kind of tiny little lonely outpost over here. <laughs> I love the gear kind of weather vane up there, though. <laughs> um, but this gives us one half of the um, four-digit thing we need. Digits, whatever. Four-panel thing we need. So we've got ball on spikes <laughs> and a half left circle. And then we need to go to this island, so we need to rotate it once more. <laughs> Disregard. Alright, so we have the cyan logo. <laughs> and then, <laughs> um, two spikes and a board. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Um,. Yes. So this is what he actually has his uh, eyes, eyeglasses on. Yikes! At just the right angle. <laughs> Yikes. Y'all are grim. Mm hmm. It's actually the. Um, Out of all of the um, 
um, all of the ages, Selenitic is the most kind of, like, pure puzzly puzzly, just because of, like, here's the maze runner and run through the maze kind of thing. But, mm -hmm. like, all these other ones are, like, this is how the tower rotation just works for those people. Like, the, the puzzles that you're figuring out are part, are integral to the story that they laid out in the book, and also, um, kind of like, just how the whole s world and age and system works, kind of thing. Which is why I really like it. Wrongy. We're still north. Okay. One, two, three, four. Uh, no, I think we're still. One, two. Oh, shoot. I. Either I spun way too much or. One, two. Okay. One, two. There we go, that's, they're south. It's interesting that we don't hear the mechanisms of it just spinning, you know? Yeah. It's very quiet. <laughs> and a board. A ball and spikes. And half circle. There we go. Magic stairs. <laughs> no, it's absolutely true. Also, welcome to the stream. <laughs> But yeah, it just you gotta have the sound effects. It just it really puts in the ambiance for the game. Although I guess the first game they could it could be a little loud. Aggressive Tower honk. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Alert. <laughs> also this is one of my favorite tracks actually. still need to finish subduction. I really want to finish it. And this this is me when I'm like, I'm kickstarting firmament and uh I haven't even finished abduction yet. <laughs> time is hard though. Yeah, time is hard. Lots of points you could bring up with the original Mist, but it is true that it was very groundbreaking at the time, and it has a very special place in my heart. So, <laughs> am I missing a page? Did I not pick up a page? I thought I picked up. A you page. didn't pick up the pages. I was literally about to save, but it had already loaded. I was like, oh wait. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay, well it's easy enough to get back. I'm sorry. No, no, it's my fault. I was too busy t <laughs> crying about Aknar's room. <laughs> <sighs> it's terrible. Yeah, it, it like the Selenitic is the worst in regards to backtracking, but go on a fucking tunnel bullshit all over again. <laughs> This one, we already know. We can hit the button. It's right there. We don't need to rotate the tower at 
at all, so... <laughs> yep. Alright, so let's... Uh, you know what? Let's grab Aknar's first, why don't we? <laughs> this oh time. Oh boy. Let's, let's grab his first. Get the room over with. Yeah. Okay, let's grab this one. It, Maze Runner's not bad. I mean, as much as, like, I'm sure it's a legitimate complaint about having to backtrack through it, it's also like... There's so many other worse games that make you backtrack through so much bullshit, and, like, Mist is not that bad. No, I mean, I'm being sassy, but it's like, once you know what you're doing, it's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Mist allows you to move fast, and I don't even have it, uh... uh like Nauseam said, uh, there's actually a fast uh, zip travel system in this game, too. So if you really want to get somewhere fast, you can use the zip system to get right <laughs> there. So they, they understood, <laughs> at the very least. Yeah. Oh, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Convinced the Cirrus is guilty. Pray, do not release him. He will destroy me just to see. The innocent bystander. I've been wrongly tricked. No prison mate! Vincent, you have observed his unbridled lust for riches! Four remaining worlds. <laughs> some plot. It was almost perfect! Final blow to the father. He tricked him into believing that it was I who was the murderer. I didn't murder father. <laughs> Bring me the remaining. Just leave. A liar. Pull in a liar. Not be free. What? Remain the new pages from the last age of mist. I must be free. Must free me. I cannot bear it here for eternity. Free me. So I get a little bit more. Aknar is definitely telling us that, uh, at least according to him, that Cirrus murdered Atrus. And um, not only that, but made Atrus think it, it was Aknar who killed him. Uh, <sighs> but we'll see. We'll see what Cirrus has to say about that, if he mentions it at all. So far, Cirrus, like, in the pages we've gotten so far, uh, Cirrus has not mentioned... Uh, their father being killed or not, so... We will see. Again, backtracking is easy, so... <laughs> and yeah, I can see that. I, um... It was so long ago when I first played this game that I honestly can't remember how it was for me at the time. Again, I was like maybe seven or eight. I don't know how old I was when I played it. I was very young. <laughs> so I can't remember if I was frustrated at all or not, or I possibly that I used the guidebook. <laughs> I can't remember at all, honestly. But I, I only had the chance to play it um, when I was at my grandmother's house, since it was my grandmother's copy. So there was a long stretch of time where, like, I had played it as a tiny child, and I didn't, like, remember how everything went as time passed. I just remembered, like, certain things. So then much, much later in life, when I finally was able to get, like, my own copy, I uh, replayed it. Um, 
mostly blind, I guess you could say. Because I still had some memories of like a tiny child being like, don't open that chest, or like, you know, that's. <laughs> Whoops, yeah, it, it does kind of suck. As much of Mist's faults, though, like, I feel like they really fixed a lot of that when it came to Ribbon. Like, gosh, Ribbon is so good. <laughs> like, I really love Ribbon. Sirius is so smarmy. <laughs> so smarmy. Uh, yeah. No, Riven is... Uh, I, I'm definitely gonna try to play Riven on stream, because, like, as much as I love Mist, Riven just takes everything Mist was and just makes it even better, so... <laughs> um, so yeah. I don't know, Sirius still hasn't mentioned anything about H was being murdered, but he did say that, like, they both accuse each other of destroying the ages, uh, besides the last four that we're able to explore. Yeah, um, I mean, I have all the games now on Steam. This is through Steam, but... So yeah, uh, we have one last age to explore, and that would be this book up here. So let's read. Hang on. Ugh, gotta get 